Hey, this is Federico with Cuddle, and this video is not a tutorial, it's more of a show and tell. Uh, I've been playing with something and I thought it would be fun to show you and to maybe give you some ideas. And if you have any questions about it later, I can actually do a more full on tutorial. Um, but for now, let me just show you some things I've been thinking about and playing with. So it, the context is that I really enjoy uh, making patterns and playing with pattern. And, you know, one thing I do sometimes is uh, I enjoy creating patterns and then uh, plotting them with a pen plotter and then coloring them with watercolors by hand. Um, because I kind of like the contrast between the the sort of rigidity of the pattern and then the 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 variation you can you can get with the handmade uh, stuff. So here's an example I did recently. Um, here's another one, um, and here's another one that is also uh, is a bit more kind of randomized and generative. So I'm kind of generally on the lookout for like interesting patterns to play with and and kind of navigate by coloring them. And so recently I. I was playing with some Islamic patterns that kind of led me to something interesting. And I think the base inspiration really for this research uh, is like Escher's work. Um, so I think Escher is like a really cool, huge inspiration. But one thing he did a lot is uh, these kind of transforming patterns or like a pattern would kind of turn into another one. So this is a, an example here where you know, he starts with kind of a figurative town and that turns into some uh, kind of cubes and the cubes kind of transform into this figure. And um, here's another example. It's called Metamorphosis 2, uh, where he actually does even more transformations between the checkers and the famous lizards and hexagons and some birds. This one is a really co cool long woodcut. And then there's another one here called Day and Night. Um, you can see the checkers here and then the way they kind of transform back and forth. And another example here is called Cycle uh, from 1938, uh, where you get the, the the cubes again and the figure that uh, kind of changes. So I kind of arrived at, at an interesting way of uh, playing with these patterns. And so the way things started is that I started trying to figure out how to replicate these uh, Islamic uh, motif. And so the basic construction of these uh, was by taking uh, eight-sided polygons and then overlapping them, and then you make a difference, uh, and then you end up with this kind of bow tie-like shape by overlapping these three. And so I created that shape uh, that gave me this kind of base style. And if you take that base style and, and uh, rotate it around the center, you can uh, then you know make this kind of base square tile that creates this motif. But then I was looking at the construction of this base tile, um, and then I realized that these um, there was a square, uh, meaning the bow tie kind of fit inside this uh, central square. And so that, uh, that made me look at it and think like, oh, it's like taking a square and kind of like pushing the sides in and then pulling the sides in by the same amount. So I was like, oh, I can, I can replicate that in Cuddle. So I created this one where like I just created an offset. And so if I change the offset of the sides, you can see how they kind of push in and pull out. And so the cool thing about this is that then I tell like, oh, well, I know how to tile as a, a basic square or diamond like these. That's like basic, you know, it is not super complicated. I can create a simple uh, tile repeat. But then once I have the tile repeat, I can create the offset, you know, uh, play with the offset. And then I get this kind of variety of, of patterns. And so at this point, uh, I of course, uh, was thinking like, oh, cool. So if I can create this like simple offset, then I can use, uh, you know, Cuddle's um, customized repetitions. So this is, this is where I landed. So here uh, I'm having these customized repetitions option enabled on the tile repeat. And then the, the offset kind of varies depending on, you know, on, on the number of the repetition. So, um, that's how I got to this. So I think this is cool because it gives me this, that, that kind of like transform that Escher uh, did so much where uh, if I change the offset from one side to the other, I can kind of go from, you know, from the basic diamond square here to something even more. And of course, you know, it, it breaks if you like push it too much, things start overlapping, but you know, you get kind of interesting results. So I think that's the, the, the basic idea. Um, is to take an existing polygon that you know how to tile and then create a variation within it that has some sort of offset. And so, you know, once I kind of 
uh, figure this out, I realized that I could do the same with the initial uh, motif I had. And so this is what that looks like. Um, so it's the same motif, but then I, I get even an additional kind of shape happening because, you know, you get the bow ties and the sort of star and the, uh, pol and the polygons in the middle. Um, so it's the same principle, but the effect is really interesting. Um, and then, of course, I get this idea of the sort of animation happening. I mean, it's, uh, some of these can be used as animations, but in some ways they are a sort of like static animation as the, you know, as the pattern kind of progresses from one end to the other. I think the next uh, variation of that or the next version that I thought about is uh, kind of follow the same idea of like, uh, you know, I started with a hexagon. I know how to tile a hexagon, you know, something like this. Um, doesn't look super different. But then I took the hexagon and then I added a path in the middle. Um, like this one. And so now if I look at that, that also looks like a familiar tiling. And so the idea with this one is that I wanted to add like some sort of, you know, variation that happened like this. And so this one leads me to kind of interesting patterns too, because if I, uh, if I change that path, you know, the kind of offset of that point, it looks like an entirely different pattern. And what looks even more interesting is that now if I get rid of the base hexagon, which was kind of like the base for the construction, or I just simply hide it, then I end up with a pattern that, you know, is based on a hexagon, but it resembles something else. To this one, I also added this sort of transformation across time. So, you know, here I have the base polygon, and if I, if I add that kind of transformation across time, let's make it a little bit smaller, um, so it doesn't overlap, um, you can see how, how I also get this kind of interesting uh, movement Maybe that one could be smaller, but, uh, and here, uh, you know, I can apply this in principle. I can leave the construction, construction hexagon that I had, or I can like hide it. And the, the pattern kind of has another interesting look. Uh, this one even kind of has an, an arc across. This is another variation of the same concept. I also started with a hexagon. And so, you know, that tiling looks, tiling looks familiar. Then I created a shape in the middle. And then, you know, a, a smaller hexagon in the middle. And then from the corners of the hexagon, I, uh, I drew lines. So, so far, so good. This looks like a familiar thing. And then uh, instead of like changing the path, I kind of just created this rotation. So as the, as the inner hexagon rotates, then, uh, then these lines just uh, stay connected to the uh, vertices. And so that one creates a kind of interesting thing happening. So here we go. If I, if I rotate those, I think I get a, a sort of interesting weave-like uh, structure. And then again, if I, if I hide the structure, the outside hexagon, the weave becomes even more prominent, um, or this kind of weave effect. And so it goes between a sort of weave and a, and a sort of rotation there with the inner hexagon. So I kind of like how this one goes between just kind of like a regular hexagonal pattern. And then when you start changing uh, the, the sort of offset, then you go, you get this kind of really interesting transition between the sort of organic hexagons and the weave and the kind of rotation. And, you know, of course, uh, you know, I'm not necessarily reinventing anything here. Like I'm just <laughs> a guy trying to make uh, cool looking patterns with the tools I have. Um, and I think that the other person to mention here besides MC Escher would be uh, Craig Kaplan, who, you know, is a huge inspiration. And he's a, he has actually written papers about uh, this kind of thing. He wrote one called Metamorphosis in Escher's Art. And you know, I was looking at this one and uh, he made these different categories for the types of transitions that Escher used. And, um, you know, the one I'm using is just probably one type or a couple of types of the ones he mentions. So, you know, he has like different types here that he uh, talks about. I think if I'm, I could be wrong, I think I'm using this type uh, called interpolation. And furthermore, in this paper, he actually mentions um, different cases. Um, and I think I'm using the cases where the tiling of the vertices are uh, meeting. So probably, you know, case one and case two in this case. Here are kind of examples from his paper. I just uh, simply kind of managed to implement it in Cuddle. And if the papers are too dry for you, I think, you know, I'm going to leave a link to this paper in the, in the video description, of course. And there's also this really cool uh, talk he did on the metamorphosis, but also he introduced me to this idea of the parquet deformations. And this actually led me to kind of try a different technique. 
Uh, so here's an idea. This one started with, you know, a basic square, a rectangle. And so what I wanted to do was not just uh, stick with something as symmetric as the other things I had been doing. I just wanted to sort of transform one edge, uh, you know, across time, you know, sorry, or across the, the transformation. So this is what that looks like. Um, so as you can see, the this edge is always changing uh, across. And in this case, I only did it from left to right. And because this is kind of so related to animation, I, I kind of tried a different setup here where like I have a variable called time and as time varies, then I get this kind of fun back and forth animation. And then, you know, the same concept, if I do it uh, left to right and top to bottom kind of gives me this other look. So I hope this was interesting and maybe it gives you some ideas for how to create interesting patterns using Cuddle. Uh, if you want to see a more detailed tutorial on any of these subjects, uh, do leave me a comment, let me know. I think it'd be fun to do some of those. And uh, thank you so much for watching.